Well, welcome to Woodna. Um, it does look like Wadena, but Woodna apparently it's pronounced. This is the showgrounds. Um, we've been here um, two days before we went up into the uh, all the little rocky spots and uh, come back and we'll probably spend another couple of days here. It's been a good opportunity to give the old van a bit of a, a dust down after all those dusty roads. And we've got power in the middle and power on the far side. We've got a kitchen facilities over behind me now and then we've got toilet and showers there's one shower and one toilet um but there's a toilet block there as well so yeah fantastic little spot and it's only just uh a block away from town where you can go and get your shops and then another block over where you've got a servo and it, yeah, it's all nice i believe it's got about 550 odd people on in book here in uh, woodna so um yeah we'll see if we can find a bit more out tonight we're off for a walkies go and have some lunch get some supplies and uh, have a little walk about. Right, excuse the flies, they are bad today. So we've just popped down a quick walk from the, um, the caravan park, the showgrounds, to this wonderful sculpture. It's called the Australian Farmer. It was apparently, uh, um, oh, they started it some 1996, I think it was or something. And it took some 17 years in the planning to uh, finally get the okay to go. So I think in 2007 he made a start. And uh, down there, the name is um, Mar Marjorie or Marjin Beck. Mm, Scott, get one minute up my nose. Um, so he's a cre creation um, sculptor. And believe it or not, this thing here was made out of 400 ton of granite. And uh, the object that you see there is only 70 ton. Um, weighs about, uh, yeah, 70 ton and it's about uh, eight and a half meters high. It uh, consists of two pieces of pink granite that were locally sourced here from uh, one of the granite, uh, or we call them mines. Uh, the head at the top represents the sun. Um, and then obviously you've got the wheat, um, you've got uh, the people. Um, there's also uh, a, a, a the, uh, the unsung, or whatever we call it, the, the forgotten, uh, the, the wife, that, uh, or the women that uh, help with the agriculture. Um, and of course the sheep, some of the, the hardiest uh, animals in drought stricken areas around here. Um, it took so long to build one for funding um, and drought did stop it for a couple of times, I believe. So yeah, and of course the, the bloke, uh, Margin, loved the area so much. He is a local in um, Woodna now. So uh, it's interesting to see around the edges. I don't know whether you can pick them out there. There's some uh, leftover pieces that were obviously uh, of that 400 ton. So uh, a lovely tribute to the farmer here in Woodna. I must come and see. As I walk around, um, yeah, you've got four entrances on here, which is um, symbolizing the, uh, the people that come from the north, the east, the west and the south. I should also point out, um, when we were in Alliston, um, unknown to me, we stopped at one of the uh, sculptures there and it was made by this bloke. So uh, hopefully Judy will be able to pop a little photo of that. Wow, just in our walkabout, couldn't help but go past one of the locals' daily drivers. So uh, this is how they get around town these days. <laughs> Plenty of front vision. Uh, that's a big wagon to be on the road. Not the biggest, but it's definitely a good size. So you can do these little walks around the town and uh, this one at the information center she said oh, if you get the chance walk past um was it marge um his house that he's building and uh wow that's a real tribute to his artwork isn't it um so he's building a house out of the, the granite rock from the local area and it's definitely his house because uh there's a few fair few uh 
snippets of his works outside as a fence. So that's uh, pretty cute. Really look nice when it's finished. Good morning everyone. Last day of our stay here in Waduna and it is absolutely fantastic. And just as we planned, we wanted to uh, uh, do a bit of exercise, grab the bikes and uh, head up into the, the last rock feature of any significance. Um, polder rock I think it is, so uh, bear with us as we uh, get on our bikes and burn a few calories. Polder Rock, I believe it is. Slocked up the bikes over there on the old shelter. You mightn't recognize me without my hat. Yep, it's Dean. Dino. Judy's going for a walk. Now we're going to go in a clockwise direction around Polder Rock. And there we have it. So it's a 7k bike ride, just over 7k's for us. We must have done a couple of little roundabouts out here. And it's a uh, yeah, good little uh, good little incline as you're coming on up, but not too bad. Real easy on the bikes. And uh, there we have it. A, uh, another one of these little granite outcrops. Don't quite see it yet, but you can see um, the Mount Waduna, which we climbed a few days ago. So this is this is just a little baby, but uh, we just needed a little bit of exercise on the bikes and uh, blow it out. So here we go. We've done the bikes. Now we'll go for a bit of a walk around the rock, and then we'll go up on top of the rock and have a look. So uh, beautiful bird bird song. How good's that? Yeah, really, really gorgeous to hear. So uh, yeah, there we go again. So we'll go for a walk around this trail and see what's about, eh? A few of them. <laughs> and here you have it, the top of Holder Rock. Uh, I think disappeared over the background here is uh, Waduna. You see a little white speck. I think that's the green tower with the road that we've come up over here. It's also the road where we turn left and um, we shot up to uh, Wattle Grove and um, Mount Waduna, which is going to be coming into view behind me over here. And I guess uh, Fildapa Rock and the other rock that we went to is over in this way. So it's quite neat to notice um, we had a little bit of uh, rain and uh, overnight last night and some of these pools are just starting to fill up with a little bit of water and there's a little bit of water trickling down the side so you can see how much uh, an important thing this rock is for the water gathering back in the uh, the days with the aboriginal people we collected water here i suppose but also uh, it goes down into a little dam down the far end here so uh, we'll pop over there and have a look at this little dam Just at the end of the rock here now, and you can see how the, the water, obviously natural runoff, down to that little uh, little uh, curbing that goes all the way around the rock, and the rock's just got that natural fall, just going straight down into that nice reservoir down there. And that'll be used for some stock, um, maybe some pastures, some firefighting, some valuable water supply, and I've also seen some photos this red floor or yabbies or whatever crayfish in there. I've seen a couple of photos. 
great spot. All right, just about finished our little walk around the trails. And what do you know, the last of our walk, we come across the dam, which is um, made from all the water that's um, coming down off the rock. So I wasn't too sure how deep it is, but there is a, a gauge over there uh, that goes up to five meters. So it's about, I suppose, just over three, nearly four, uh, three and a half meters. So, and look how, yeah, up, up to here would be five meters deep. So it's a nice little uh, swimming hole, watering hole. Uh, yeah, and of course behind me is the tail ends of the, the rock. I think we've noticed that there was another one of these dams on the other side. But uh, this is the end of the, the trail for uh, all the water. A little curving's finish here and then into the water, into the lake. Right, we're going to find our bikes, eh, hon? Yep. Got any idea which way to go? Yep. That way, okay. Uh, whoops, a little correction. No swimming, no fishing. <laughs> Don't drink the water. <laughs> So it's purely just for irrigation. Oh, I nearly got into trouble with that one. Right, just finished our little walk and we just thought we'd share something with you guys. Um, as we've been cycling up, it was quite obvious to us, um, we found a little geocache. Now, some of you guys will go, what are they talking about? A geocache is a little bit of a treasure hunt. So I'll leave Jude to uh, explain a little bit more of the ins and outs of treasure hunting and geocaching, but it'll be great for kids, great for travel, um, great for just exercise and um, see places. So, so geocaching is basically an app you download off the internet. Um, you can download it on your Apple phone or your Samsung or whatever phone you have. Basically, um, it's, a, it's a treasure hunt. So basically, it gives you coordinates to go and find them. They could be micro, they could be just an outlook of looking somewhere, um, good photoshops and everything like this. Otherwise, they have a collectibles. So we've had a couple of collectibles. Um, but sadly, people like to collect the collectibles and you end up losing them. My last one got to Germany and that's where it went missing. So we're Sebastian uh, and we've been doing geocaching since 2003. It's a good way of getting out there, seeing places that you probably wouldn't normally go to uh, and to find a treasure. Uh, as I said, you can have micro ones, so it's really, really tiny. You can have ones in boxes, and they can be hidden anywhere. They could be up a tree, they could be in a pipe. Mm. But yeah, it's fun to actually do. Yeah, get into it. Um, you, you either um, take nothing, leave nothing, or you swap it. And, and honestly, it's just little trinkets, um, little fridge magnets, or keep them small because a lot of the vessels, they're only little jars or something like that. But um, it's good fun to go. Yeah, there's a little pad in there where you can write your name and the date you were there, and then you go onto the app, and right. then you click on the app and say that you've been there. And you can put a photo up, but don't put any photos up of exactly where the geocache is. Give away, yeah. yeah. So if you are walking around trying to find it, sometimes you can go into little little uh, cheats or little hints, and they are usually either photos or a little bit more description so that it can help you. The GPS will actually get you pretty close to it. Um, we were in one little town and we we're looking around the bottom of this tree and it was actually up the tree. So it just really depends on uh, where it is um, and you could be in, with, it says, within a metre. Yeah, and if you like it so much and you want to take part in actually doing your own treasure in your local areas and things, you're more than welcome to set up caches through the way that they explain it in the, um, in the program. Yeah, in the program. And it's easy to um, log in and everything. Yeah, we haven't done it a lot this trip, mainly because, I mean, I've got the, the motor home with a trailer on the back, and sometimes you've got to be weary. It can lead you up some little um, backcountry roads and things, so I've, I've erred on the side of caution. But this has reminded me of this trip that we've done on the bike, and um, all of a sudden you're a lot more accessible with the bike or then you're out on foot. And this particular spot that we've come to, Jude's had a look at the app, and there's literally... Oh, so. Yeah, on the way out here, yeah. So, uh, and make sure you sort of download it. Um, like where we are, I've got no internet, so it's very hard to actually download where the geocaches are. So, make sure you download them before you actually go out and do them. 
So yeah, we hope that explained a bit of geocaching and something you can do on your travels um, or just in your local area. Look it up, you'll be quite surprised. Yeah, and it's a, it's a fun thing for adults and kids. All right, thanks for watching. Just remember, if you want to um, uh, help us with our numbers, click that like, uh, subscribe, um, follow, follow button. Yep. That's right. <laughs> Please help us and we can bring more content to you. Love doing it.